next on the Love You More Show. His character couldn't keep up with my purpose. Everything got revealed online. <laughs> I found out with the rest of the world online that he wasn't being faithful. And then he filed for divorce. What did that do to your heart? Is your heart postured to be in another relationship? And if so, um, like, what do you look forward to the most? For my bow, chick, oh, wow, wow. Do you think you get away with that type of, like, attitude besides the anointing because you do have white skin? Because I think if black women <laughs> did the same thing, it'd be like, angry black woman. I oh, told more on this show. It's like this room was just like a, <laughs> just tell it all, Kim. Tell it all. Love you more. Part two with Real Talk Kim. I went through everything that I went through for them. And I could still be used. And then I realized that if I never, ever, ever, I never dreamed I was going to be pastor in a church. Mm. I never dreamed in a million years that God would qualify me to write five books and they sell what? I got a oh, six-figure yeah. book deal last year. Three times divorced. <laughs> Girl said, three you times know what I'm divorced. saying? Like I, I literally am on flyers as a relationship expert. Is that not funny? That's how God is. He is the kind of God that will take your mess and turn it into a message. He knew before me and you were ever even a thought in our mother's womb, Willie Moore Jr. He knew that we were going to hit rock bottom and find out who the rock is at the bottom, which is Jesus. And he knew it was going to be without us at an altar call. He knew it was going to be in the back out there with a cigarette in our hands, feeling like with the whole world's waiting on us to not mess up or to, or to get back up again. They don't know we're crying out here trying to drink a, two or three bottles of wine just to get through because we're being judged if we walked out on a mistake we made. He knew that. And he said, when you get up, man, you're going to be able to pull people out of hell that nobody else in the church could ever, ever touch. Mm. He knew that. Yes, Lord. And so that's what he did for me. Yeah. He let me work at Bloomingdale's and Belk, where I thought I had lost my ever-loving mind, and it became my pulpit. Oh, that's so good. It became my pulpit, man. And yeah. I love, fell in love with people. I went from hating people to loving people. Mm -hmm. And I started doing these videos in my car. <laughs> <laughs> what was the moment when you realized that online ministry was going to be more beneficial than the traditional ways that you've seen it? Well, you know, Willie Moore, like I was working at Bloomingdale's and I was coming out of my pit. Like I felt myself coming out. So I was starting to encourage myself every day going to work. One hour coming to work, one hour going to work. I'd be listening to T.D. Jakes. Get it, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Yeah. So I was thinking like, oh, I'm I'm saved. Like I'm healed. Yeah. Uh, if a mosquito bit me right now, I'll get the Holy Ghost, you know. <laughs> I let a man slide in my DMs uh -huh. and met him twice. Mm -hmm. Still working at Bloomingdale's, not preaching, barely even going to church still. Mm -hmm. And this dude slid in my DMs, met him twice, married him. That's this the, the third I mean. one. <laughs> Ball head. Yes. Dude. So in that no, let me tell you. Okay, <laughs> so I've been knowing her for. A I gotta minute. tell y'all this. I know I've been knowing her for. It's a gonna minute. make y'all feel better about I yourself him for a minute now. You know I ain't want to say nothing. I was just like, but I started to see a different Kim coming out. Cause you know you could tell when somebody with somebody because they start looking like the somebody. You know a little bit more calm or whatever. And I must have popped on one day. I said, Oh, she ain't with him no more. <laughs> And it wasn't no disrespect, because I, you know, don't get me wrong, I seem to like him because he was bald head. I still got videos <laughs> online right now that said, oh, you got a bald head, brother. It's good, it's good, it's good. <laughs> Only thing missing is a beard. You know, I would say that all the time. So what happened there? I, I thought you guys had known each other forever because he was an older gentleman. No, I, you know what? I was still at Bloomingdale's and I thought I, I wanted a dad. You know, my dad had been diagnosed with dementia. Uh, I wanted my kids to have a father yeah. and I was, this dude slid in my DMs and I wasn't, I was still at Bloomingdale's. I was starting to come out of my pit, but I was still broken. I'm obviously a, a glutton for love. You are. I want to love. I thought, you know, I thought, <laughs> I mean, you did love him. I won't lie. I did. did. And and I am one of those loyalist person, you yeah, know? Yeah. So uh, we got married and I am, I met him twice, married him. And How long did it take for y'all to get married? Lord, it, it, <laughs> Kim going all in. <laughs> she at the casino like, all my dang chips. Here go gotta, all my damn chips. I gotta chips. tell it. Like, I gotta play tell a half it. a chip, Kim. I gotta tell it because it's in my new book that just released. You gotta get up, you know? Oh, we put the little screen So you gotta on tell it. it. Well, um, you told all this in the book? Look, I tell everything. Well, because if anybody comes out uh, with anything, they've already heard it. You know what I'm saying? And, I, and, and, I'm, and I'm a hopeful message. So here's how it happened. So after we were married... Um, I started, I started really getting free probably about three years after we got married. I started 
really listening to T.D. Jakes. So you like T.D.? I like T.D. Like, he was my voice. I think everybody has a voice. Yeah. Don't you think? So who's your voice? Bishop Who, Bronner. Yeah, Bishop Bronner. I love yeah. Bishop Bronner, too. Yeah. He's stable. Yeah. Uh, so he was my voice in that season. And he started bringing me out of this pit. And I was started doing these videos. And I was driving like a knockoff Bentley. Uh, which is like 300. a 300 Chrysler. <laughs> yeah, I already knew what you And had. it kept me sitting but on the side of the road. you kept it clean, though. Uh-huh. You kept it clean, though. I kept it clean because I believe your insides <laughs> look like your car. <laughs> oh, don't make me run. Stop, Kim. We I was like, no, we're going to prophesy with the inside of the car. You hear yeah. me? Yes, Lord. And it was sitting on the side of the, of the road one day, and I did a video. And, and that video went viral. So it was three years after we were, me and him were married, and that video went viral. And I'm talking like... Oh man, like a hundred thousand people overnight. And it wasn't even that good, Willie Moore. It was just like a white woman with a mohawk. You did have a mohawk. And I was like, hello, awesome people. Are you sitting on the side of the road in your knockoff hoopty? I think I forgot about video. you. Crystal Lee showed me that video, I think, or because you know we used to look online and stuff, and I see that. <laughs> and I it went know. viral. You used to wear wild hair and glasses. Listen, and- I look like somebody's auntie. You was, was fly then. You was fly for then. This is flyer. Let's get that out of the way. But you know what? It worked then. Remember, yeah. I was preaching in tutus too. Yep. I remember the tutus <laughs> with the no woo wah wham. I've all, there's always been a method to my madness, okay? Then I got on Preachers of Atlanta like two years that. later. That's that's when that's when I actually seen you vulnerable. Yeah. You weren't superwoman then. Yeah. Because it was just so much. Whew. I remember, I remember you, you gave me some of the greatest advice. Then. I remember you came in and you was like, do you think it's good? Do you think it's going to be good? I was just like, it don't matter. You're good. Oh, I was, I, 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 people were throwing me under the bus, man. I remember yeah. that's when my marriage really went down the hill. It, it went to hell in a handbasket. So how long, and I'm going to let you tell the story, but how long was it that when I met him, when, when you all came, he was just so supportive, kind of in the back. Yeah, so wonderful. It was when I went on Preachers of Atlanta, everything flipped. Talk kill. Let's make some noise. Yes, yes. All I can say is, oh, it's about to get deep, family. It's about to get deep. So, so Kim, today is the premiere tonight, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time of Preachers of Atlanta. It is. Pretty it sad. is. How excited? How excited are you? You know what, man? I'm just so honored. Like. I'm just, I'm right where I'm supposed to be. Like, yeah. I'm seeing people on the Oxygen page saying stuff under my video, like, I, I don't even believe in Jesus, but you make me want to go to church. <laughs> and that's what it's about. Amen. That's what it's about, is seeing people that church hurt, jaded, now they're seeing somebody saying, you know what, you might have you might have messed up, but get up. Uh, Mark, I want you to really chime in. You are the husband of Miss Real Talk yes, Kim. Yes, that's my yes, baby sir. right yes, there. Sir. And and family, I'm going to take a picture to show you that team bald head men are in yeah. the house. I love your <laughs> your bald head major love of you. We in the same gang. How tough is it, Mark, to be with a woman who's in the spotlight? She's preaching, she's teaching, and sometimes you have to just take a back role and say, you know what, I'm just here to support you. How do you do that? Oh, man, like my wife always says, Willie, she's my escape and not my duty. Hey, man. You know, as a pastor, I've got Holy Ghost radar. I, I like to I like to see the gifts in our church and see them rise up. I'm not yeah. one of those controlling pastors that tell people how to do you know, what they do best. I see the anointing on my wife. It's amazing. Yeah, and yeah. I want to see her soar. It's my job to pull everything that God's put into her out of her and let her flow in her anointing. And I think she's amazing at it. It was like when when I got known, he couldn't handle it. His character couldn't keep up with my purpose. And I'm talking, everything got revealed online. <laughs> I found out with the rest of the world online that he wasn't being faithful. And then he filed for divorce. What did that do to your heart? Ah, man, I was there again. You know, I was just like, here I am again. And it was during the pandemic. It was right at the start of the pandemic. And I was like, this is, this is going to take me out. This, was, this one's going to finish me. Because mm. I never saw it coming. I was like, well, this is the third one. <laughs> You know, like, this is it. You're, I'm retiring. Like, I'm going to be single forever. You know what I did? I, I took, I took three years, three years. My daddy died three months after he left. And I literally thought I was going to lose my ever loving mind. Because Kim always had a propensity to fake it, 
keep it moving, never show my weakness. And I let myself just heal. And thank you were still online, right? Yeah, I was still online. I did prayer calls and praise my way through, but I allowed myself to get so vulnerable and it was all me. Like I, like we, I did challenges where we expose things on the inside of us that, that we've never approached. We've never talked about. Like I allowed myself to really go there with the world. Mm -hmm. And for three years, that's what I did. I just learned to mourn and move, learned to heal, mm -hmm. learned to find me. Cause I really, for the last three years have unpacked everything. I just unpacked in this podcast and this yeah. show with you learned to love me more. And it's so, it's so amazing that you get to that point because, and like, here's the thing. I never want to play victim, you know, and, and I promise and vow that I wouldn't share anything until after this stuff is over and final. But I will insert this. Like, what I was crucified for, I actually had already put in a book that people had already bought thousands of copies of. Yeah. And it just was literally brought back to the forefront. So here I am, the best version of myself. Like, I'm literally the best version of myself. And I'm still hearing about the things that we had already navigated through just because it became this really unique smear campaign. And God is like, you are of no reputation. Man. And I'm just like, hey, you know what? Whew. But I'm so thankful because now I love me so much. Like my friends are just like, yeah. oh, you must have closed another big deal, bro. Congratulations. I'm like, no, 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 no. Nothing has changed except me. I can tell. I, don't I can tell in all you. That. I can tell in you. Uh, Dr. Creflo Dollar, uh, uh, Mama Taffy, because I went over there to see them. That's my, 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 my former church. And she said, oh, okay. <laughs> I can feel I mean? it in your yeah. presence. Yeah, you just. Like, I can totally see, I can feel the change in you. Yeah, that like you can't, so ugly. You can't fake it. You yeah. cannot fake healing. Yeah. You can't fake, and you got to do the work. And that's when God told me, he said, you got to feel it so you can heal it. You can't yeah. keep numbing this thing. Like, I tried to do it with, the, like, literally, I find my biological family, 2020. <sighs> my whole imagination of what, because I just lived in my imagination. I'm a singer. I'm a rapper. I'm a this. I'm a, I'm a do this. And then I meet the real family. I was just like, oh, okay, this is where I come from, though. <laughs> Dang. I love so, when you go into that Like, place. damn, like, this is where I come from? Okay, praise God. Not that it was bad. <laughs> But for the first time, I got a chance to see what was chasing me. I've always been chasing goals, dreams, admirations, and visions. But now I got a chance to see that alcoholism is, it, 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 you know, people going to drink it. Yeah. Like, and be functional. I was like, ooh, I can't do that. So I can't just kick it and have drinks. So I set some strong borders with myself because I know some people in our family could be out of control. Like, no, no, no. Man, they, Willie, they, man. they like, oh, well, why do Willie? I just gave Demetra mm. a real hug yesterday. She said, no church hug this time. I've been working oh. with her for months and months. But I set borders for myself Come because on. I'm like, no disrespect to my family. But womanizing can be in there if you're Come not careful. On. And so I'm like, oh, you set these strong boundaries. People think I'm goofy and just doing whatever. But I'm like, no, for the first time in my life, I'm not living in my imagination I'm no longer just chasing goals, dreams, and visions because now I live in kingdom. I don't yeah. toil for anything. It comes to me, right? Yeah. And then I choose because that's kingdom yeah. living in my personal opinion. But I'm now looking back and saying, oh, I see what's been trying to chase me for a long time. You wanted divorce to be in my family. <sighs> if I knew that that was in my bloodline, I would have chose more wisely. I wouldn't have chose somebody that I just wanted to kind of like build up. And we can do it, baby, what have you. I would have let that be somebody else's job because I didn't know what was chasing me. Yeah. I didn't know the, what was in my bloodline that was coming to really to kill, steal, and destroy. And I was toying with it, yeah. playing with it, having unhealthy conversations with ladies, Smoking a little too much, and now I'm smoking for real. Was drinking a little too much, now I'm drinking. Oh, that's in your bloodline. Yeah. But I and made that a is real. And I said, uh-uh, it stops right here. Yeah. And my kids, now they see. They see that daddy used to sneak outside and come back and be like, oh, he's been smoking again. Yeah. Uh, they, they seen daddy trying to hide it in this, that, and the other. But their new testimony is going to be, come on. I remember when come he, on. he really got serious about Jesus. I remember <laughs> when he surrendered it to Jesus. I remember when we were staying in that little condo. Now we stay in this six bedroom yes. house. And from that six bedroom, we went to a farm. Come on. From there, we was flying commercial and first class. And now he has a plan. Come on. From then, he was talking about adoption. But now there's 37 acres with four different houses on it. And not only is yes. he fathering us, he has he's now fathering 120 
3,000 kids around the world with Will Flow Homes and Adoption. I wrote it. I'm showing them. Come on. And they get a chance to see a new version. And that's what I see in you now. <laughs> I was like, damn, she looked she look younger uh-huh. than she did when hell she 34. I met you in 44 or something like that. I remember like, it's her birthday in 44. Uh, I know it. You know what I mean? You know, you tell everything. I do, and I probably shouldn't. You know, I even, I, I, even my mom and this. She's like, you know, you ain't got to tell everything. I'm like, you know, but out. I, but I do yeah. because there's somebody in church yeah. right now that is feeling like God. God's done a lot with me. Yeah. He's still doing a lot in me mm-hmm. in the world. I preach on the biggest platforms. In the world, mm-hmm. I own companies. I'm the first millionaire in my family. Wow. God has literally, I'm proof that you can mess up. If I don't tell about my mess ups, mm-hmm. how can I show a glow up? I'm giving hope to these people. And if it means I got to throw myself under the bus to do it, praise the Lord. Let's go. I, I remember when I was feeling really bad about myself and my dad, um, and my sons, uh, one of my sons came in to me and get, handed me a poem And I tried to do a a quiz on Facebook about 25 things about me. And it was when I was feeling so bad about myself, Willie Moore. Like I couldn't even tell you what my favorite color was. I could tell you what my favorite food was. I just lost me. And Mm -hmm. I remember on Mother's Day when my, when, when Lincoln was 10 Mm -hmm. and he brought me this poem and on the poem, I remember saying, God, I just need to know 25 things that's good about me because I've lost me. And he brought me a poem and it was 35 things that I love about you, mom. And that's how God is. Mm -hmm. God will bring even your kids around with 35 things that I love about you. Number one, number one was because you were the loudest one at my basketball game. And you used to tell me, stop yelling at my games. You embarrass me. And then number seven was you conquered hell in high heels. He was just saying, mama, I know you think that you're thrown away because you've been divorced because you lost everything. But to me, Mm -hmm. you're my hero. In this last one, did you did you suffer loss? Did you go through the same type of anguish that you went through with the guy that you actually really no. gave your heart and love? No. How long did it take you to, to bounce back? Because it don't seem like social media ever quit. No, it didn't quit. In fact, whenever um, it, it happened, I found out with the rest of the world. I mean, I literally remember Larry Reed was the, the way I found out. Was, really? Yes. It was like, you know, your husband's all over social media right now. People are asking whose husband he is. And I'm like, what? And he was, he got exposed for, for uh, doing what he shouldn't be doing. And for me, it was almost, it was, it it was more embarrassing, Mm -hmm. you know, because here I was again. And the thing that I wrestled with was here I am. I'm not worth fighting for. I wanted to be married 52 years to the same person. Like mom and dad. Yeah. Yeah. Like my mom and dad. And so here I was now I'm pushing 47. I'm white. White women melt. Ish. <laughs> I'm like, I'm man, now I gotta like date right? again. Like, no disrespect to my Caucasian uh, compadre, but you know, white ish. You know like, I mean? you're gonna have to date again. You're gonna have to, uh, if if you ever even go there again. Like, you've you've had all ages. Now what? I know you an old, same side, same. Same age. Yeah. And then 18. Yeah. So you did have all ages. Yeah. The good thing about it is each one, except the first one, lasted for a really long time. So mm-hmm. I know I'm likable. Mm-hmm. I know that I, obviously some people can't get married once. Mm-hmm. Obviously, there's something really great about me. I got married three times. <laughs> so I got something good. Yeah. So what I did was worked on me, worked on, worked on being able to cook. Worked you on cook? no, man. I started making me. Like, I'm going to be, I'm that alpha female that's going to be like, what? What you want? You want so some you midnight? Cook, cook. You want me to okay. get him, make you brownies? Let's go. Okay. I'm going I'm to I'm, I'm be his escape and not his duty for sure. I stole that from you. Uh-huh. I stole that from We're you. We're going to be living I our think, best life. I think I gave you, like, credit three times on the radio, though. <laughs> I was like, yo, and just like Kim says, da 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 Just uh-huh. like Kim, about the fourth time. Man, I promise you. It, but no, I didn't. I didn't. This one didn't take me out. This one was like, you were an idiot. You knew better. Two like, days. <sighs> You the two days, you dummy. Like you kind of deserve this. More love you more podcast after this. You know, all relationships start off beautiful. The love is so intense in the beginning until life happens. No matter how disciplined you are, temptation is everywhere. And we all have to fight with our internal monsters. And sometimes 
We fall into the trap and we hurt the ones we say we love the most. As you get older, loved ones pass away and you're left to live life with a void that you never really anticipated. For some reason, people never talk about the parts of you that die when your loved one leaves the earth. It's so easy to lose who you are in the midst of all of this. I lost myself because I forgot to love myself. I'd like to take you on a journey in hopes that you can learn how to love you more. Wow. To check out the first episode, log on to loveyoumore.com. This one didn't take me out. This one was like, you were an idiot. You knew better. Two like, days. You, just two days, you dummy. Like, you kind of deserve this. No. But I didn't know that I was going to go. I didn't know I was going to succeed the way I did. Didn't know God was going to put his hand on my life. But again, it made for a great book. You got to get up. You got to get up. I think nobody coming to get you up. You got to get up. You got to get up. You got to stop crying. You got to stop. Stop beating yourself up. Stop. Stop drinking two bottles of wine to go to sleep at night. Yeah. Stop being fat. Get rid yeah. of the back boobs. Go lift some weights. The back boobs, KB. <laughs> That's what I'm going to start calling. Yes. So, get up. So stop Kim, being mean. Kim, I was going through my mess, right? And uh, oh yeah, we got the book. Yeah. Can I touch it? Can I touch it? See what it feels like. You can touch it. You can touch it. You can touch it. You can touch it. Come on. <laughs> ain't, that, ain't that how they do? I love it. Yeah. I so, love it. The chest. Oh, there goes the little there mohawk goes, thing again. Uh huh. Oh, look again. Real talk, Kim. You got to get up. Grab hold of your life after being knocked down, held back, and left out. Pastor, motivational speaker, and best-selling author. Wow. So I'm going to go through here. Radical restoration. There's a declaration in it. It said, I once thought that I was broken beyond repair. Now I know that I will always have choices to make. I choose to grow and glow through the process. I will no longer allow uncertainty and discomfort to dictate my progress. I know that the healing is worth every step it takes to get there. I release the control I thought I had, and I humble myself before the Lord. Getting up. Let's talk about radical restoration and what that feels like for you now. What man you're walking in? Radical restoration is unapolog unapologetically God saying, I endorse you. Mm -hmm. And he has a propensity to use people with the worst past to create the best futures. Yeah. He gives us platforms mm -hmm. and nobody opens the doors for us. At he all. just says, man, I trust you because you put in the work. Mm -hmm. And something about hitting rock bottom and finding out who the rock is at the bottom. I like me, that. Me and you ain't never going to let it get to our head again. No. We're going to be so thankful. We'll reach down and pull the worst case scenarios out. Because we know what it's like to be judged. Mm -hmm. We know what it's like to be dragged online. We know what it's like for people that said they had our backs to walk out. Mm -hmm. You know, we know what it's like to people to air out our, our, our laundry when their skeletons are sc screaming in the closet. Yeah. And so that's what radical restoration looks like when no one thinks that you'll come back, but you do. Amen. You know, I'll be honest with you. I was praying and I said, God, you know, who needs to be on the show? Because what I've been attempting to do is, is show people, like, I can't really have a great interview if there's no backstory that doesn't have some mud in there because I want to show that there's a moment when a person says, like, no, 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 I'm worth it. Like, I'm worth the wait. Like, I'm worth the, I'm worth what I'm getting now. And I just remember being so, so, so down and I would, I would just go look. And I remember like I was so vulnerable and I would see like if somebody from the gospel industry that I knew, like if they would like a post or comment. Oh, that's so I dangerous. Just, I would just get so mad. And I, I remember one time too. I seen you was like, I'm praying for you, sis. And I was like, okay, I don't like look real talk. Him, no. no, I literally did. I was just like, <laughs> I don't like her no more. Anybody that's on her team. And, oh. and I was just such in a bad place. And I did, you know, I'm just an honest guy. And I was just like, why didn't she check on me? Like, I really love her. And and I, you know, because I really have a genuine care for, you know, who you are as a yeah. person. Like, I've seen many. I knew I knew that other one must not have worked when you came out like this. I'll be honest with you. I was like, it might not have worked because she was a little bit more conservative then. But that really hurt me. Aww. But I But I don't know if you meant to. You know, I didn't even know y'all were walking through anything. Mm -hmm. I really think that I'm so out of the loop 
And I think for me, I felt the same way. Mm-hmm. And I did the same thing you did. I was like, oh, yeah, I like them. And you and, like the post. But you can't do that. I know. Because you got to realize, I, like I used to even put up posts. You got to be careful about even hanging out with people that play on the wrong team. And yeah, that's yeah, not yeah. true. Because yeah. it's just because we didn't work out doesn't mean that somebody can't still be their friend. Right. Right. No, that was the petty me. Like I wasn't whole. Oh, I was petty too. Oh, I was like petty. I was petty Pablo. I'm talking about Petty Petty LaBelle. But you do really realize that yeah. nobody knew what was Petty LaBelle. I was Petty LaBelle. <laughs> and I met Patty LaBelle, too. She rubbed my arm twice. That's that what, pandemic that, caused a lot of people. Yeah, we, that, pandemic, there was only, that uh, pandemic was unique. But I think everybody discovered themselves. I just didn't think I knew. I just couldn't be fake. I was like, man, you know, the Lord has restored my heart. And I seen online that you were, that you were coming with a book. I didn't know what book. And I just said, what I do is... If I ever feel anything, it's a Man, learning moment. If I said if, if if there's, if I ever feel jealous of somebody, mm. if I feel disrespected or hurt by somebody and they may not know it, I'm going to always go serve them. Come on. Because I know that God will honor that and it'll be something on the inside of me that may be able to be reconciled on the inside. So I just have this thing. Like sometimes, you know, shout out to my brother, Jeremy Anderson. I called him one day. I said, man, Jeremy, they got somebody want to give you $22,000 to come over here. Jeremy said, I'm at 45. I said, I said, oh, Negro, you at $45,000? Yeah, 45 minutes. And then I was like, ooh, that's something else. And I just, I reposted his stuff because I wasn't going to let that crazy spirit of comparison yeah. get on me. And when I said you was about to have a book, I remember 2021 or something. I had been separated for like a year. I was like, oh, she had liked the post. Or she said, go girl, you're going to be okay. And I said, oh, I got to do that thing again, right, God? I got to do that <sighs> thing that it did. And the moment that I seen you, like I felt this piece that said, we were just walking through the same thing. We were. Because I didn't, like, I didn't know until today, you know, I ain't put no business in the street until I, you know what I'm saying? I seen... I was like, oh, okay, so, oh, yeah. I mean, I knew something was different, but I didn't know the difference. It's been four years. It's been four years. I didn't know. You know, I, for me, I think because I've walked through divorce, I'm probably the the person that feels like one of my callings is to love people through divorce. Mm -hmm. Because God does not take his hand off of us because of a divorce. Like, he is not the kind of God. I don't even think God expects us to stay in a relationship (laughs) with somebody that y'all calling each other out of names, you know, y'all causing each other have to drink every night. Y'all ain't sleeping in the same bed. Your kids are hearing yelling and screaming all day. So lullabies y'all going through counseling. Uh, I just, I just, I'm not condoning divorce at all. Like I am not all of y'all that watching, waiting to drag me through saying, Pastor Kim is condoning divorce. I believe you got to fight like hell for your marriage. And if I ever get married again, this time it's going to be right. This time they're going to get a good woman. I'm not, they pack their bags. I'm packing mine and going with them. But I would never judge someone off of a divorce. I do want to ask you this. You've been married three times. Um, and I just read, read about radical restoration. Is your heart postured to be in another relationship? And if so, um, like, what do you look forward to the most? Oh, yeah. I definitely think that my best is here. Amen. I think that I'm going to definitely be relationship goals next time in That's my good. own house. Amen. I believe that God is going to give me the desires of my heart. Mm-hmm. I believe I'm going to be an incredible wife Mm -hmm. and I'm going to have an incredible king. Mm -hmm. I'm going to love the hell out of him. Come on, love the hell out (laughs) of him. I'm going to make him a better man. He's going to make me a better woman. Yes, it's to love. Come on, yes to love. Yes. Hey, y'all, real talk, Kim got hips and everything, too. <laughs> she wore little pants, too. I ain't going to show it to y'all. I got what? But she went past. I put my head down. For what? Because I wasn't going to look back there. <laughs> it was something back there. I said, Lord, have mercy. The pastor got something back there. I'm working out. <laughs> like, I'm getting ready for my vow, chicka, wow, wow. Oh, my God, Kim. I, so I am going to be a great wife. Where can people find the book? Is it online now? Does it come out soon? Yes, before? it's here. Uh, you can get it on Amazon. You can get it. Uh, you got to get up. I also have the audio. Uh, did you do the did I you did do it. The okay, It's I, bestseller. You know all those people that said I sound like I gargle asphalt or smoked a whole ma- pack of Marlboro menthol. Well, hell, you did at one time <laughs> smoke a little bit. Yeah. I, nobody knew that until now. Well, hell, we I told more on this show. It's like this room was just like a... <laughs> 
Just tell it all, Kim. Tell yeah. it all. So you come out with a lot of posts that's so strong. I mean, strong posts, too. Do you think you get away with that type of, like, attitude besides the anointing because you do have white skin? Because I think if black women <laughs> did the same thing, it would be like, angry black woman. More Love You More podcast after this. You know, all relationships start off beautiful. The love is so intense in the beginning until life happens. No matter how disciplined you are, temptation is everywhere. And we all have to fight with our internal monsters. And sometimes we fall into the trap and we hurt the ones we say we love the most. As you get older, loved ones pass away and you're left to live life with a void that you never really anticipated. For some reason, people never talk about the parts of you that die when your loved one leaves the earth. It's so easy to lose who you are in the midst of all of this. I lost myself because I forgot to love myself. I'd like to take you on a journey in hopes that you can learn how to love you more. Wow. To check out the first episode, log on to loveyoumore.com. Because you do have white skin? Because I think if black women <laughs> did the same thing, it'd be like, angry black woman. You see angry black woman? <laughs> like, I just think you great. And then your audience is like, I want to say like 70% African-American women. I don't know what your analytics is Man, like. I just did a retreat this week and there was more white people in the building. I about passed out. You did? I was like, what are all y'all doing in here? Hip hop. I was shook. You the hip hop white girl. You I didn't guess know I was. I ain't seen that many white people in one of my meetings in forever. Did you shift? Did you change your approach? Or no, you so I am. I don't know how to change for nothing. It, I have found that either you love me, or you will fall in love with me. You hear me? Because hey, I am. I, I am like so. That. I'm so lovable. Oh, you like you I'm a good person. I, I I'm lovable. Um, I think it is because I'm white, but I also think that you can't fake authenticity. And I think because I come from a genuine place. You do. I think people know that I love hard and I mm. love for real. And when I deliver something, this is this is what healing mm. looks like. It this is. is what walking through hell and coming out on fire looks like. This is this is a place of saying, man, auntie did it. So you ain't got to do it. So girl, go sit your hips down. Be kind to your husband. Go take that hair bonnet off. Go go to the gym. See, that's what take I was the saying. ho-hos out of your mouth. Yes. So if, if I, feel I like can tell you because you don't want to be divorced. You don't want to have to get back out in these streets again. So I think that's why. I think they know that I'm coming from an honest, loving place. I don't want them to hurt like I did. And I don't want them to have to learn the hard way. And so let me be the one that took one for the team. Hmm, <laughs> so they're like, I'm like, don't. Th that, God didn't tell them the cross for you to be a side chick. And they're like, that's me. I know. I that's know. That's me. I'm like, I, I was call. on one live. I'm glad you said it. <laughs> you, you was on one live. And he was like, oh, I just feeling them. Then you I mean, was giving it to him. I was like, get them then. Get them then. <laughs> and then she went to one and she was like, you, some of y'all sitting up in a bed right now with them right now. And you, did, 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 did. I was like. Damn, she telling everybody business right now. Somebody just pulled up everything. It was like, you know what? I got to get out. Don't click on Instagram in the morning unless you want to get called out. But I was like, yo, like she's just authentically being herself. And I think that's always been the edge because many times ministry comes with this very careful approach. But I think when you came in, you know, you just kind of came as you were. But there were so many other people that you could have pretended to be like yeah. because that's what was making the you know, making the noise. And I think it's hurt me. You know, it hurt me in some churches. Like, mm. you know, they're like, oh, we, she can't, that, no, she can't come to our church. She can't, because I'm a lot. But God is, God has given me such a online presence. I don't got to go to your church. Ain't that cool? You know, God has given me mentorship programs and books and that if you let me come to your church, great. And I will set them all free in a loving manner. Yeah. But God has allowed me, as long as I stay consistent and authentic and my heart stays right, he keeps opening the windows of heaven over my life. And I ain't got to bow down to be vanilla. And ooh, we don't talk about that. No, we need to talk about it. Somebody needs to talk about it. <laughs> because yeah. right now we got a lot of divorce. We got a lot of nobody talking about sex. Nobody talking yeah. about addiction. We're all sitting behind... A uh, uh, gas station smoking yeah. Marlboro lights and yeah. preaching on Sundays. I mean, yeah. let's just, it's somebody needs to talk about it. 
you you have like you was always a pretty girl, but you are really pretty. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so it's, so, it's her makeup job. No, no, no. Like, no. It's, I mean, I know <laughs> structure. You. you know, I'm talking about bone structure. She got Thank cheekbones you. and everything. I'm working. I've been looking man. at you for a long time, and I ain't never seen this version Thank ever. You. Maybe it's lights. Get the hell. Out. <laughs> um, all right. You so. know what it is? It's joy. I promise you, it is like when I tell you healing, you can get snatched. You can go get a BBL. You can get boobs. You can go get a facelift. You can do all of that. But if your insides ain't right, yeah. these insides right. Amen. My heart's right. Oh, yeah. I'm happy. You I'm. I like wake it. up happy. I go to bed happy. Yeah, and you downtown now. Yes. Overlooking this is this field. right here is just yeah. happy. It's like vitamin D from yes. the, from the world. Just I'm a whole party because I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. The whole part. So, so listen. I'm gonna put a ball on this thing. So, yeah. having the opportunity to speak to her, three things I think that I, I understand. Number one, we all have a journey, right? And I think it's very important that we enjoy the journey, even when the journey isn't enjoyable. And you know, the truth is, the Bible. All you know, everybody said all things work together for the good for those who love the Lord and are called to us. But like we say that a lot, but I think sometimes we don't navigate through the complexities of all things. Yeah. Cause some of those things kind of make you feel like, God, did you forget about me? God, is this like a joke? Are you like some like, is this, it, we're asking Kusher, God, like, are you serious? Am I being punked? And maybe that's where you are right now. But this is the part that I love about this show is that we created a safe space where people actually feel comfortable enough to share their grievances, the things that they overcame, some of the most unique complexities of the all things. In hopes that maybe as you sit there in your living room, on your screen, or wherever you're watching this, that you'll get an opportunity to say, hey, maybe, just maybe, my situation isn't as bad as I thought it was. In fact, this thing may be coming to propel me into my next dimension. I often think about archery because my children, they go to a really mucky muck private school. All right. And so archery is, is, you know, is a thing and lacrosse is a thing. And so when 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 you're doing archery, a lot of times, you know, you put that bow in there. And I just figured it out that, you know, no matter like if you if you want to be pushed like just a little bit, you just go right here. But if you really want to get that thing, that that thing to just really go, you got to pull back, back, back and then you let go and it just boom, it just goes out. And I was like, yo, that's dope. But I realize in order to be propelled forward, sometimes you have to be pulled back. Who am I speaking to right now that may be in that pulled back seat? I hold a book of a person who was pulled back, talked about, made fun of. People said all type of things about her. But she decided that she would help you with a book in your pullback place in hopes that you could get up. And I believe that this is just a seed towards you getting up. And your best days are ahead of you. Get up. Get up. Family, I want to encourage you to do two things. Number one, subscribe to this channel. Ain't no way you're going to enjoy all this great information and then don't hang out with us full time. Don't just be side chicken me. Okay, <laughs> come on, make that commitment. All you got to do is subscribe. And then, of course, I want you to hit that little notification bell so make sure you're informed when these amazing guests come on. And then last but not least, maybe leave a comment. I want to put. I want about 50 people to send an encouraging message to Kim because I want to honor her bravery because there's not too many people in the kingdom that can live so free. Between her and Larry Reed, these two are the most freest people that I ever <laughs> seen in my entire life. They're just like, oh, hell, I'm going to tell it. And my prayer is in my healing and wholeness, because I think I'm very, very close, that I get the opportunity to be as free, and prayerfully you'll get the opportunity to be as free. So leave some comments here, and just make sure that you show how much of appreciation that she was honest, open, and transparent. Can you do that for me? I know you can. Next week is going to get bigger. It's going to get better. Be on the lookout for the series. It's coming up very, very soon. And uh, listen here, I'm going to try to hide this chest meat because <laughs> I don't want you to love me no more than me. Mama, I told you I wasn't trying to love you more. Flat out. You see this chest meat, though? Feel like an old player. <laughs> Feel like an old player. And it is a wrap. 
Thank you for watching the Love You More show. I'm so humbled by it. Do me a favor. Hit that little notification bell so you can be informed whenever we do some updates right here on this show. Hit subscribe. Leave a comment. I'm going to read every single com comment, good or bad, right? Because I believe a good conversation is necessary in order for us to move forward. Thank you for watching the Love You More show. Hey, Stone, come on in. I'm tell sorry. Him, just tell him thank you. <laughs> tell him thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. He don't no, even don't. know what he's thank you for, but thank you for watching the show. Flat out. Love you more. Love you more. Love you more.